I'm here with Scott Stahl of Grand Haven High School on his way to Valparaiso. He had an awesome third quarter. Tell us about what happened with that touchdown pass. Well, you know, we came out in the third quarter knowing that we had to do a lot of things different um, than the first half because we had uh, some bad passes, some drop balls, and, you know, we didn't, we didn't come out strong. So we know in the third quarter we had to give it our all. And so receivers ran great routes, linemen blocked, and it, everything clicked in the third quarter. But we know we have to bring it fourth quarter because they're going to give it our best. That's great. Scott, tell me how do you feel participating in this first annual Muskegon All-Star Classic? You know, this is just great. This is awesome uh, just for the WV Foundation to hold this. I mean, it's a great atmosphere, a lot of great talent, and it's just, uh, it's just an awesome opportunity to play in it. Okay, job well done. Have a great rest of the half. See you later. Bye-bye. We're all set, going to the fourth quarter. Hey kids out there playing. One of the 70 All-Stars here as uh, we just get underway, 12 minutes left in this first All-Star game as Duncan will come under center now. And a uh, little fumble on the play as it looked like he was going to try and keep it. Going to ride out that fake off from uh, Mason Courtright. That one could have got messy real quick there. DeAndre Kimbrough came around the side there for the Legends, and he was ready to tee off on Princeton Miller, but the, uh, I'm sorry, Princeton Duncan rather, and the ball hit the ground. And uh, luckily, again, we've seen a few fumbles here that haven't resulted in turnovers, uh, which is very fortunate. Third down and about six, we'll call it a uh, long six, and the ball on the Legends 34-yard line. It is going to be, well, I was going to say it's going to be trips. It is going to be trips, as Alexander will be the inside receiver of the trips. On the outside will be Thompson and Duncan. Princeton Duncan is trying to. Quarterback draw breaks a couple tackles, and here he goes around the right side. He's got himself a first down and a big first down as he was nabbed in the backfield, it looked like, and able to turn and spin, showing you what speed uh, and good athleticism, athleticism can do for you. Absolutely, Floyd. Just an exciting player out there, and uh, – We'll see. I mean, uh, I think they're going to punch it in here personally. I, I don't know what the overtime stipulations are here, but <laughs> hopefully we need a winner. Uh, yes, and it will be interesting because I'm sure both of them would want to play and keep playing until they have a winner. As uh, They are all winners as this uh, program has just been great, this game and the WV Foundation and uh, Terrence Williams and Nick Vandenbosch. Their dream has come true, and it is now first and ten. Keep your eye on the left side here, Jawan Lewis. They're, uh, they're clearing it out for him. He takes a counter to the left side. Actually keeps it himself, but does open that left side. I love Floyd using that motion. It's really deceptive, especially at this level. You bring the guy one way, and you go back the other way. And uh, linebacker is a tough position. I'll tell you, you got to keep your eye on that ball. We can't even see it up here. And they got guys coming to hit them. So when you see these guys making plays, it's just a testament to the athleticism and just the discipline that they have to make their right reads. You're reading the guards, seeing where they're going, and you just have to instinctively react. So great job by all these guys out here today. Yes, and that was uh, in there making a tackle was Tanner Jacobs, who uh, is a linebacker, as it is now second and seven. And this time they try to hand a fumble on the play. This could be a big play here as uh, Dynasty, of course, is trying to get down. And they say, they, the officials, that, well, first I thought they said Dynasty had it. And Tanner Jacobs, who we were just talking about, says, I got the ball. The legend's all pointing like they have it. So that'll bring up a third down and a big fumble recovery. You never know what goes on at the bottom of that pile, though, Floyd. No, you don't. I know Tanner Jacobs came up with it, but uh, he thought he had it. But the official said, nope, the ball was down. And so that will put the ball on the 16-yard line. And it'll be a third down in seven. Dynasty's down by seven, 14 to seven. You're in two down territory here as well. And just with the way Coach Colette has been calling the offense, look for a run here to maybe shorten this distance and then go for the touchdown if you need to. Trips to the right, and that is Thompson, Bellinger, and Alexander. He's and go he's looking for him in a flood pattern. 
And he's got uh, Doriot from Mona Shores. Aaron Doriot is really having a heck of a ball game here today. Yeah, just showing it on both sides of the field. And Princeton Duncan showing the arm strength yes. a little bit right there. We've all been talking about the great athleticism, the ability to make plays and break tackles, but just drilling that out route, you know, having played for a while and just talking to other quarterbacks and coaches, the ability to hit that out route, they say it's really the toughest throw in football and be able to plant that foot and deliver it with some velocity, which he was able to do right there. First and go from the 10 now for the Dynasty. They're down by seven, nine minutes, 30 seconds left in this ball game. And they, the Dynasty pound through the middle that time as the Jawan Lewis of the Muskegon Big Reds. He'll be just short of the five yard line. He'll be down to the six yard line. It'll be second and go from the six. And Princeton Duncan now comes in with a play. He's had Jacob Buddy split to the left and Jacob will go back to the left. Lewis in the backfield, trips to the right. Doriot is in the middle, and Alexander is to the far side. Inside is Thompson of the trips. But they're going to try and let, uh, try and let uh, Duncan uh, run. And good defense down there. Yeah, not fool. It's going to be hard to get this one on the ground. We've seen Duncan's throwing ability. I'd really like to see another play action and let him drill one of those passes. I know Doriot's itching to get in the end zone, and uh, he's getting a lot of clearance on his man each time. That was uh, Deon, DeAndre Kimbrough on the tackle. We've had 10 runs and one pass this drive so far as it is third and go now from the five. Lewis in the backfield. They give it to Lewis. He moved the line back but he's short of the goal line and that comes to a big big fourth down here it's going to be decision time here for coach Glad he's going to take a time out to discuss it I mean what do you do here Floyd personally as I mentioned as a quarterback you want the ball in your hands the uh, Saints had a situation earlier this year too where they kind of took the ball out of Drew Brees's hands and uh, there was some discussion about it um, definitely showing the ability to move the chains, but uh, what's your opinion on this? <laughs> My opinion is I like to be able to be up here and to be able to see a great game, which we have, as it is going to be fourth and go from the four. And a great staff that we've had here to bring this first inaugural uh, All-Star Muskegon Classic football game, and that is Corey Blackman, who's on the audio, Alex Coleman, Nick Lard, Alonzo Pollard, they're on the cameras. Chuck Coleman is on graphics. We have uh, Kelsey Lamore and Nathan Hicks on production assistance. Tanya Johnson's been our director, Dennis Redkill's producer, Brian Wheeler, our technical director, and uh, Lindsey Huddleston, the second down there with those great interviews. Greg Shaler doing our stats up here with Brad. Prisma Zalczynski. Very well done. <laughs> Along here with Floyd Fonte bringing you this great one as it has been perfect. Started out with a bit of uh, uh, lightning and wind and rain and no one would believe that we'd be able to be ending on this of a great note. Uh, but we have and the crowd keeps growing here as uh, it is now fourth and go from the floor. I guarantee you Princeton Duncan's telling the coach right now that he wants the ball in his hands on this one yard line. We saw the uh, dive up the middle fake and his ability to get to the outside, but the way Coach Collette has been calling, he might just try to pound it right up the middle because um, Jawan Lewis is definitely a capable young man as well. Jawan is going to be in the backfield. And Doriot is split to the left, and they come into the power backfield. They'll go motion, but they're going to give it to the quarterback. Duncan, Princeton Duncan is no call yet. Looks like he's short. Still no call. There is a call now. And so Princeton Duncan uh, drives down, is stopped by 
the Legends defense just on the goal line. I mean, as we say, a game of inches, and he's on, he's just short of the goal line. Cause what an just, effort. Just got to break the plane, and he, you know, did score. So well, They met him a little bit back. You know, he drove forward, and like you mentioned, just a matter of inches, and Still some time left here, though, Floyd. Seven minutes to go, and we've seen what happens when teams are pinned back against their own end zone. We'll see what Stahl can do here. He'll be taking a ball out of his own end zone, and he's going to throw it. Nice grab and first down, Danny Cotter. We've heard that connection a time or two. And Stahl, you can just see his confidence growing by leaps and bounds. Just really zip that one out to him. A lot of uh, open field there for Danny Cotter as he creates separation from his man. Nine yard gain on that pass. Bring up a second and one. Ball just short of the 10 yard line. And it'll be double twins and going to throw again. That time it was intended for uh, Fallens. Incomplete. That'll stop the clock with seven minutes and 11 seconds left in this game. It is Legends 14 and Dynasty 7. Well, it shows you how quickly things can turn here, Floyd. We go from an almost scoring drive to a now third down and short. It's decision time. You're going to have to punt this away if you don't get the first down here. So um, really got to dig in here if you're the Dynasty and not allow this first down to happen. And the Legends come in tight, so they're going to try and power it for that first down. And they give the ball to uh, Rico, and he gets the first down. So Jesse, he's from, played his uh, high school ball at Fremont. Just down the road a bit from here. And so it's first and ten with the ball on the 11 yard line. And we've got uh, trips left, split right formation. Danny Cutter split to the left by himself, but it's a flood pattern intended again over there to uh, Ryan Williams Fullins. Great touch there by Stahl, playing a little bit of stare down with the receiver, but um, that's a tough throw right there, Floyd. I mentioned the ability to put it on a rope on that out route, but with that cornerback sitting underneath, Stahl does a nice job of floating it right over his head. Unfortunately, the receiver couldn't see the ball to the last second and uh, was un unable to bring it in. We talk about these kids and their abilities on the field, but, boy, they are something in the classroom also as uh, many of them uh, going on not only athletic but scholar scholarships to schools. As you see, Stall, it is tipped. And I believe getting in there was Brett Martin. That time it uh, counted. We saw Brett come on through. He is a good sized guy, also. Absolutely. I mean, we must be sitting about 100 or 150 yards away from him, Floyd. And uh, definitely wouldn't want to meet him down on the field as <laughs> he's a load jogging off here right now. That'll bring up a third and 10. Ball on the 11. Matt Crow will be split to the left. Inside of him will be Bellinger. They look to come across the middle, and uh, that time uh, Fallins dropped the ball, and that brings up a punting situation. Yeah, Williams Fallins makes a nice inside cut, and uh, a little bit of a risky throw, but the way he had his man sealed off, you just see the confidence of Stahl there to deliver a nice throw and uh, really got to pull that in if you're Williams Fallens as they're going to be turning the ball over deep. Uh, rather, I'm sorry, they're going to have to punt it away now, and it is a game of field position, so we'll see if perhaps the dynasty can break something here. It'll be uh, Courtright along with Thompson as uh, Jenslinger <laughs> fumble. I heard a whistle. Yeah. Interesting. Early whistle, and he fumbles it. We'll see what happens. And now there's a scrape for the ball down low. Uh, we said earlier, this isn't like your NFL uh, all-star game where guys just kind of stroll in, stroll out. I'm here. Don't really hit me. Make it look good. These guys are playing solid, great football here. All great athletes. We well, can see the desire to take one back. There was no fair catch. 
signaled there, Floyd, and so I'm really surprised at that quick whistle because after the catch was made, the ball did come loose. So uh, very interesting. Obviously, though, it's all about the safety of the players as well. And yes. so um, a quick whistle there. Uh, nobody can really mind that. And we're going to see the dynasty with an opportunity to uh, put it down the field as Travis Cockrell back into the game for Princeton Duncan. Um, more of the uh, big arm threat here. We'll see if they're going to move it down the field. Well, Cockerell will have Dynasty with a trips right, split left. And uh, he has court right in the backfield. Six minutes and 24 seconds left in this ball game. As long count, Travis is going to roll to his right side. He's looking deep. He has a man open. He's going to score. Aaron Doriat, we've talked about Aaron playing on his home field here, Mona Shores. He just made one heck of a catch after a great throw, and uh, looks like Travis Cockerill got banged up a little bit on that play. Yeah, might have had the wind knock out of him there, Floyd, but great job extending the play. He knew where he was going the whole time. Doriat makes a nice move, able to get back to the outside, and uh, we hope that Travis is okay down there, hopefully just a little bit of a stinger for a minute. So that makes it 14-13, and coming out to kick will be Jordan Alexander. Quite a disparity, Floyd. Uh, looking at the last drive here, it was just handed me. Last drive for the Dynasty, 13 plays, 12 of them runs with one pass, and obviously that big stop on the one-yard line. Uh, this play, it was just a one-yard, uh, or one-play 60-yard bomb there from uh, Cockerell to Doriot, and so... Um, opening up the playbook a little bit there. As we talked about, Cockrell's arm had a couple turnovers early on, but steps up and makes a nice throw there. We got a tie ball game. We do, as Jordan Alexander put it through the upright. So with six minutes and 14 seconds left in this first annual Muskegon All-Star Football Classic, it is now Dynasty 14, the Legends 14. And we'll be right back with exciting action here of today's game. along with, with my main man here, Brad. So we see Travis Cockrell uh, with that big arm capability, extending the play, delivering to Doriot. And um, just again to say the talent that is on the field today here as we see now big plays for both sides. Um, these kids want to win out here, Floyd. And here comes one who wants to break a run who said that he was going to try and run one back. And that was Ryan Williams uh, Fallens. They were out here talking, like I said, this week when we got a chance to see him. And, and Ryan was like, I'm going to get, uh, they were hoping to get the kickoff because with the rule, the different rules, we're playing high school rules. In high school, you can't run the uh, ball out of the uh, end zone. But Ryan was like, this time I'm going to get to run one out. One of his buddies said, well, they got to kick it in the end zone for you to be able to run it out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Definitely everybody's got to do their part. And Walter is going to keep it on the auction. And he's got a gap. He will have a first down and more. Fumbles the ball. I think he was down, Floyd, perhaps. Oh, he's they're going to give it to him. Call. They do give it to him. Interesting. I don't know if we have a replay on that, but it looked like the one ref was a little bit shaky. Uh, his back hit the ground there, Floyd. I don't know. That was a great well, they're run They're going to talk about it. And nope, they've talked and they've said yes. So after a great run, uh, it will now be the Dynasty's ball at their own 36-yard line. A little shake and bake. You saw the uh, handoff, a little bit of a miscue on the fake there, but then his ability just to take it. I mean, he was 40 yards down the field there, and it looked like there may be some daylight to the right, but with that helmet on, sometimes, you know, the peripherals and uh, great play there by the dynasty to force a fumble. And we're going to have a... We got a challenge out here? Did I see a red flag? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, we don't have the red flag, but... Uh, like we said, uh, these guys are real serious here. We got a 14-14 score here. 
five minutes and 57 seconds left. Might give us a chance here to uh, look at, we talked about the scholarships here, Brad, and there are 10 of them that are going to be uh, handed off. $1,000 scholarships, and, and uh, we talked about uh, already one with um, John Walters, and yeah, John John Waller receiving the uh, hardship scholarship. Just to mention, you know, a few of the others here. I know uh, there's going to be the Nick Vandenbosch scholarship, which um, he's going to be providing personally um, a scholarship for one young man, as well as some tutelage, um, you know, they can receive mentoring from Dr. Nick Vandenbosch. Wow, what a great guy to be mentored by. Absolutely, as well as, as, well as T.J. Williams, yes. who's going to be doing his own lawyer scholarship for those young men interested in um, that field. T.J., obviously a pre-law major at Adrian College, went on to Cooley Law School for one year and then graduated from Pepperdine, which let me tell you, Floyd, that one's in Malibu. So uh, <laughs> even though he's hitting the yes. books, when you're on white sand in paradise, <laughs> I don't feel too bad for him. You know what I mean? Yes, I uh, happened to be talking about that college early in the week and heard how nice it is. Uh, I, but uh, he was doing the study, and as there is first and ten now, Duncan going to give it to his – Former uh, teammate in high school, Jawan Lewis, Muskegon Big Red. And he'll pound for about, well, I'll give him about three yards, bring up a second and seven. Uh, just to mention one more, there's going to be two leadership awards given out, um, one from each team given to the player and the team who's exemplified leadership both on and off the field. So I would imagine the coaches are going to have um, a lot of say in that, and it'll be interesting we're going to have some presentations after the game, so definitely stay tuned. As Princeton Duncan brings his team up, the dynasty with a second down and seven. Ball on their own 39-yard line, and uh, Duncan looking to throw. Coming across the middle, got a man open as uh, Thompson was open. I'll tell you what, Floyd, this is uh, Princeton Duncan. He's got some... Uh, <laughs> He's pretty tough out there. He saw that guy on a beeline coming to hit him, and he stood right in that pocket and delivered. A little bit low, but I got to believe, you know, that's a tough catch to make, but it definitely would have been huge for the dynasty. So we're going to see here as he talks it over with his coach what exactly they're going to do um, with a little bit of time remaining. You know, still five minutes, so definitely not panic mode yet, but you'd like to keep the ball out of the hands of the legends here and hopefully go into score. Yes, as it is third and seven from the 39-yard line. And in the backfield now is uh, Terry Doxey from Oak Ridge. But it's trips right, split left. Duncan looking to throw under some tough pressure coming in is 73. We've called his name several times, Jeff Duye of, Granville, of uh, Grant. Yeah, he just consumed them right there. That was uh, no chance. They ran that little play that they liked, the double slant with the, the speed out, and it looked like uh, Princeton was getting ready to deliver that as they were hoping to get the first down, but Duya was having none of that, Floyd, as uh, they're going to get the ball back here. And as we mentioned, game of field position, we haven't seen too many deep punts, so perhaps we could see a game breaker here on a return. Well, we have a speed back there, Fallen's is back there along with John Waller, and it will be Williams Fallens comes around the left Ooh. side, and we got a block in the back there, but yep. no call by the ref. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see anybody get no. hurt, but he ran out of real estate anyway. So Coach Joe Coletta said, "Now, hey, I, I know it's an all-star game, but come on." Yeah, he's still in the refs here <laughs> right now. I mean, Floyd, I could see that from up here, and that ref was there, but. We're trying to keep it friendly, yes. obviously, but you can see you know, these coaches didn't get where they are you know, by not being competitive, so Coach Coletta definitely yes. giving them an earful. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, uh, the coaches, what a great opportunity for them. Uh, both Joe Coletta, the coach of Dynasty Retired, as well as Steve Wilson and their assistants doing a great job here as Scott Stoll back in the quarterback. He'll come out to throw and – Nice job as he completes it to his converted tight end receiver, Cody Bale of Fruitport. Cody Bale, you know, they're uh, <laughs> little bit of Ron, this. Yeah, a little bit of Ron Gronkowski out there, or Rob Gronkowski out there, you know, the uh, hybrid big man who uh, they don't seem to be able to match up with. And 
soft hands too. You always he like does. to see that the big guy getting downfield, making plays. So um, look for them to go to him again. That, that's got to be his third or fourth catch today. He'll be split. He being Cody Bale to the left side and Danny Cotter over to the right as that is knocked down again by Brett Martin. Brett Martin, you can just see nastiness in him when he's in <laughs> yes. there. You see that. He batted that thing like a volleyball spike. Yeah, he and does. He was looking for bail again, though. We mentioned uh, Scott Stahl uh, had him open on the uh, flat over there. And, wow, just what a play right there, being able to spike that ball back the other way. <laughs> he just just like it's taking care of business. He does yeah. it, turns around, okay. And uh, I had a chance when I was talking to Cody Bale. You know, he's used to being a tight end. And he says, yeah, they're going to put me out as this flanker or a split guy. I go, you're going to like that, you know, the way they throw the ball. And he has liked it as now it's second and ten. And Matt Crow will be split to the left. Danny Carter, Carter over to the right. But it is intended for Matt Crow. And over on the defense of uh, Dynasty is Aaron Doriat, who uh, playing on both sides of the ball here today. Absolutely, and that's a testament right there, Floyd, to not having a lot of time together. As you saw, the receivers only about five yards apart, and as a coach, that's one of the things you don't want to see. When your players get too close together downfield like that, it makes one man be able to cover two, and that's what you saw there as Stahl sailed it a little bit. But a smart play as you don't want to put it into all that traffic. In the backfield will be Jesse Rykal, but they're going to throw it in a flea flicker. What a nice play <laughs> as Danny Cotter caught the ball and flipped it on over to uh, Ryan Williams Fallens of Muskegon. Looks like we're digging deep into the playbook, Floyd, here. We need to win this we game. Are. So the old school hook and ladder right there. Danny Cotter, a nice pitch, and uh, they're able to move the chains here. A little bit of excitement as uh, the crowd's getting involved a little bit. They like that one. Isaiah Townsell, Townsell of uh, Montague saved the touchdown as uh, it is first and 10 now. Score tied, 14-14, three minutes and 23 seconds left here in this first Skegan All-Star Classic football. And Scott Stahl will throw again, almost intercepted. And number one again, Brett Martin right in his face, and I bet you Stahl felt him, but wow, Floyd, I can't see, man, these interceptions, uh, in their hands, and these guys, you can feel how bad they taste as they react after it hits their hands, but yes. just great plays on both sides as Stahl was under pressure, and uh, we're going to be looking at second down now. It will be second and 10 on the 46-yard line. Keep your eye on Matt Kroll here. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the wide side of the field, and uh, Stahl might be looking. They're going to come inside to Courtright. He'll break through for a first down. Tough, hard running. Courtright, a fullback by nature, uh, putting on his Mike Allstott right there a little bit, a little churning down the middle. So uh, great draw play there, deception. They're looking for the throw, and uh, it worked out perfectly. Down to the 30-yard line for the uh, Dynasty and uh, or the Legends. Down to the Dynasty's 30. As Scott Stahl will... Still be the quarterback, and Matt Crow will be split to the left. And it looks like split over to the right will be Cody Bale. And it is Matt oh. Crow intercepted. I guess who Aaron Doriot yes. making another play, Floyd. And, you know, I was one play late on that. He wanted to go to Matt Crow, just hung it up there. Maybe a little miscommunication. Crow was heading down the field on a streak. He had him. Stall hung it outside, and wow. Know, what can you say about Aaron Doriot showing the hands there and saving you know, what could have been a game-breaking play and giving his team an opportunity to win? On your own home field, uh, Doriot playing, of course, here for the Mona Shore Sailors during his career, and wow. One of the guys out there having a great uh, evening, as they all have had fun and uh, would try and go through some of the names of those guys that we have out there. Um... Now on the side of defense, um, Kalen uh, Shackleford from uh, Reese Puffer is out in the secondary. We mentioned Tanner Jacobs, the Buccaneers, has its first and ten now for Cocker uh, Krill, and uh, he hands off. 
They're running up inside. This time, nobody's moving inside. Norris Ellis in the middle of that play. And uh, you can just see the intensity out here as these players. It's going to be interesting what they try to do. Cockrell, obviously, with that touchdown pass on the last drive, yes. see if they're going to try to sling it or uh, perhaps, you know, if the clock runs out again, Floyd, your guess is as good as mine. If we're going to see an overtime or, you know, have that wow. uh, good-natured tie, which yes. I don't know if you can do that in football, but it is, <laughs> you know, for charity, and it's an all-star game. So we're going to see here. But if Cockerell has anything to say about it, they're yes. not going to have to worry about it. Well, Cockerell is uh, going to have Lewis in the backfield with him, and he has trips to the left, and he rolls to his left. Flood pattern. Gets it off, first down as he completes it to Jalen Thomas, Thompson. Nice, nice play by Jalen Thompson there. The pass a little bit behind him, able to make the tough grab, and then the ability to get that first down. Awareness on the field is definitely something that they're looking for at the next level. Jalen Thompson possesses that speed and quickness, and a huge play right there. As we're looking at a minute 39, we're going to have a timeout. No, they're going to keep it playing, actually, and just <laughs> very good play there. 14-14 here with the dynasty and the legends as split to the right will be Alexander way to the right. Cockerill is going to roll to his right. And he'll, yep, avoids, uh, gets it off. And good defense coming across for legends is John Willer. Great play by Waller there. The Waller. fans are up in arms right here as we see. They wanted a little bit of an interference call, but Waller using his hands to clear some space. I like the no call there by the ref. They're letting the players play, and Waller definitely wanted that ball more. As Cockrell got away with one there, he hung it up a little bit too high, and uh, great play by Waller. Waller, as we said, another guy having a great job, Brad. And uh, what a story on him. I mean, and... Uh, the programs and you go to the website and check it out and uh, read his story we said all these kids have great stories but a challenge and to be out here and to think about where he was you know just several years ago in that worn toward country and uh, be able to be here playing football just not growing up with the sport even and being able yes. to adapt to it you know as Cockrell fumbles the ball picks it up under trouble breaks away coming around the left side Tanner Jacobs uh, gets him and tackles him, and he's not out of bounds, so that clock is still going. Oh, they say he was out of bounds, and the <laughs> the coaches are uh, of uh, the dynasty are watching it pretty close. A little fumble ruski there. Cockrell uh, fumbles the ball, able to pick it up, though. Yes. Looking now at a third and short here. Uh, they're getting something cooking here, and if they can get this first down, we're looking at 56 seconds. We might be in for a barn burner here right at the end. Yes, and uh, I love it. The coaches are saying to the officials, hey, come on, you got to put some more time on the clock. Got to gotta love the competition. Eh? Absolutely. <laughs> you can't turn that off. I don't care how nice yes. it is out there. You can't turn <laughs> off your passion and competition. It has been a great one and great sportsmanship and great action on the field as we now have a third down and three facing the dynasty. Trips right. As Cockerill is going to keep it himself. Breakthrough for a first down. Goes out of bounds. Smart, nice move. Smart play by Cockerill yes. there. You could see maybe he could make one more move and break a big one, but gets out of bounds. Nice unselfish play, giving his team the opportunity. They're looking at first down now with the opportunity here moving forward. Into the legend uh, territory as they are now at the 48, 47-yard line, we're going to call it of legends with 50 seconds left it is legends 14 dynasty 14. overtime would almost be fitting for us though here for <laughs> yes. as we endure oh, a 90 minute hey, delay there is no doubt i'm not getting home tonight Both i don't these think teams, no i gotta make a phone call this one's <laughs> going forever we're going into the late yeah, night here turn the lights on you know that both teams want to keep playing first and 10 as trips to the right split left cockerill is going to sprint out to his right side He's almost had it uh, complete over there as Alexander going for it. But, again, good defense. Waller in that position really knows how to attack the ball. You know, the receiver went up to meet it. Great job on his part. But Waller with that nose for the ball, able to poke it away and avoid a big play. Brings up second down. 
44 seconds left, second and 10. Kind of interesting, they moved that ball. Now it'll be on the 48-yard line. Kind of moved a little bit back, but. You can see Cockrell under some pressure, making some good fakes, some nice throws. They're getting a little too much air under it, though, as he is under pressure. So if he has the ability to plant um, and get a little bit more time, you might see a deep ball here. It'll be Alexander along with Doriot on the right side. Second and 10. Going to be a draw, quarterback draw, and uh, Cockerill will get out of bounds. Looked like he was in bounds, perhaps, Floyd, but are they going to give it to him? Yeah. Oh, they did. They did this time. The fans aren't happy about that. <laughs> that depends on which side. Yeah. That's one of those calls where it depends on which side you're, you're sitting on. What a great crowd here for this first All-Star Classic. As... Uh, Coach, head coach Joe Collette talks to his quarterback of the dynasty, Princeton Duncan. Third down. Interesting sending down. in Princeton Duncan. He hasn't been in in the last two drives, and uh, they're going to go to him. Obviously, like the athleticism, we'll see if they have any tricks up their sleeve. Definitely capable of throwing the ball as well. Trips right, split left. As Duncan is going to drop back. Looking to crawl. Oh. He was looking for Doriot. He wants that one back, Floyd. He definitely yes. had him right there. And as you can see, the pocket held and gave Duncan the ability to sling it down there. Perhaps a little more air. Doriot was off to the races. 32 seconds left. Uh, it is 14 for Dynasty, 14 for Legends. Fourth down and nine. Now the ball, <laughs> that ball keeps moving. Now the ball's on about the 47. It's moved back and forth a yard or so. We've been throwing passes, but uh, that's going to be a timeout. And uh, that'll give us an opportunity again to thank our staff here. Corey Blackman uh, on the audio. Alex Komen, Nick Laird, Alzan. Al Al I was checking to see what do we got here. Okay, we do have a timeout. Alonzo Pollard, cameras. Chick Coleman, uh, Chuck Coleman, graphics. Uh, Tanya Johnson and Dennis Redgill, our director and producer, Brian Wheeler, Wheeler, our technical director here. As we've had, what a heck of a ball game here so far. Couldn't, couldn't script it any better so far here, Brad. Absolutely, and uh, definitely, you know, a game of stars with some stars emerging uh, even brighter. You know, Doriot having a great game both on offense and defense, had the opportunity there to perhaps break a big one. And you might keep your eye on him still as there's still some time left. And then Danny Cotter on the other side, pretty much his counterpart, uh, getting it done as well. Scott Stahl throwing him some nice passes. And both Cockerell and um, Princeton, excuse me, Princeton Duncan uh, for the dynasty having great games. So just as we mentioned before, so much talent on the field and with uh, bright futures ahead of them. Some of these guys perhaps playing in their last game and you can see, though, the passion with which they have uh, strapping it up for the last time, but several of them also going on to uh, hopefully bigger and better things. It is fourth down and nine. When we get going here and 32 seconds, 14 to 14. It started out, it was a monsoon lightning thunder delayed for 90 minutes. There was talk about will this game even be able to go on. And uh, it was waited out, and it has gone on, and it has been fantastic. And what a great first game to have here. As it will be, Princeton Duncan, the quarterback, he will have trips to the right. Keep your eye on Dory out up top, though. He's by himself yep. on the short side of the field with Duncan's ability. To his left side. There it is. And he is the receiver. Oh. Tip. Interception. Intercepted. And Duncan sells it wisely. They put Dory out. They wanted that one-on-one -on -one coverage. But uh, what a heck of a throw there, Floyd. That was about a 40-yard rope that Duncan was able to deliver, but uh, not fooled. Tanner Jacobs is uh, the Buccaneers with that interception. So we still have 22.9 seconds left in this tied ball game, 14 to 14. We don't know if they're going to go in the 
to overtime here, but uh, I'll guarantee you both sides will want to, the players and the coaches. Might see a prevent defense here from the dynasty, but with all the game breakers on the field, I think you just, uh, you know, you don't go for that Hail Mary, such a low percentage. If you can get uh, somebody like Cotter uh, available and get him some space to run. Scott Stahl, he is looking for Danny Cotter off to the right side and good coverage over there as it's been a good battle between Danny Cotter and uh, over there on the side, uh, Thompson. Absolutely, and you see the arm strength of Stahl right there. Just a little flick of the wrist, 50 yards in the air. Probably has a lot more than that behind it. Again, a good sized kid out there. And um, coming down to the end here, they're going for that Hail Mary and you just can't let your guy get behind you. You can bet that's what the <laughs> dynasty coaches are screaming right now. No, let nobody get behind you. 17.8 seconds left. Ball is on the 15 yard line. As it'll be Matt Crow split to the right. Inside of him is Bellinger. Pass is thrown over to Danny Cotter, who breaks through and gets a first down and then gets out of bounds. What a great move. Absolutely, Floyd. I'm very surprised if you look um, on the left side here, Kroll is being single covered by number eight out there with barely a safety over the top. Um, there might be some ability for some fireworks here. If he could slip behind, usually you'll see uh, more defensive backs in, in this situation, but it shows the coaching. They're confident in the players they have out there, and they're not going to give up anything for free underneath. It is Scott Stahl. He is looking for Crow. You've called that a couple of times. I, I'm, you know, wondering what's going on here. Well, you like I said, you know, I'm real co close <laughs> with the coaches out there. And uh, Scott Stahl saw what I saw, did a nice job of looking off, um, but they weren't fooled, really. Uh, nope. Doriot is out there. Doriot's on Kroll. That's, the, uh, that's a tough matchup for Kroll out there, as Doriot um, has shown all day. And uh, we're going to see here now, coming down to the end, exactly what's going to happen. But... Uh, Second down and 10, 7.3 seconds left. Ball on the 15-yard line of this first Muskegon All-Star Classic football game. Tied score between the dynasty and the legend, 14-14. Scott Stahl is under some pressure, gets it over, oh. almost intercepted, went into the hands of uh, uh, Fallens, dropped, and then it almost got intercepted. Looked like that was... Um, Let's see, who was that over there? I think that was uh, Raymond. And so we still got 1.4 seconds. That's an eternity, Floyd. <laughs> Third down. Hmm, you got a feeling they might throw it. We saw uh, the uh, legends with the uh, hook and ladder. Been a great one here. This could be the last play here of the game. Scott Stahl, quarterback. Look for Franklin over the middle. They'd like to hit him running, or they're going to go for the bomb. Scott Stahl, it oh. Oh, goes in and out of the hands. Uh, Dion G'day of Oak Ridge. And that is going to end it here as we have come to the end. And what a great game. And it really is fitting that, uh, you know, the game in on a 14-14 tie because great players on both sides. I don't know, Floyd. However, I see however. TJ, <laughs> TJ's going out there. They're talking to the coaches. <laughs> TJ doesn't. He's a player. He knows they don't want to end he's it He's saying, like this. hold on, hold on. I think he might have said, hold on. And you got to remember now, TJ, uh, Terrence Williams, and Nick Vandenbosch, who put this whole thing together, our football guys. Well, TJ's a lawyer, Floyd, so, I mean, <laughs> the ref, he might lose his car and everything. If I don't even know he's gonna what he's going to end up with. But it there. looks like I don't know what's going on in the middle there, but I know the players definitely want to finish oh, this. Oh, and so do the coaches, and they're saying, let's go for it. Hey, and the fans are saying, let's go for it, too. Somebody get the refs a water bottle, though. They're working hard <laughs> out there, too. They are. They're thinking that right now, like, okay, now, really? Saying Nikki V saying, let it roll, Nick Vandenbosch. <laughs> and the kids are cheering because gonna they're going to keep playing. We're going to play right. it, Floyd. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's been so much fun. They're saying, hey, we got to keep going. And so the fans are cheering and the kids are cheering and the coaches even. 
as we'll find out how we're going to go into this overtime play here at the first Michig uh, Muskegon All-Star Classic All-Star Game. We'll be right back. Here we go, huh? This thing could get wild. Yeah. We are back here as it is going to be overtime in the first ever Muskegon All-Star Football Classic. Floyd Fonte along with Brad Prismazinski. Well done. Wow, I love that name, man. I'm going to go over that all the time now as Brad and I and Lindsey Huddleston, the second and Greg Shaler and our GHTV crew have had a great time here and the fun is still going. We started with a big old rainstorm and uh, now we're ending with another battle as we are in overtime and it will be from the 10 yard line and starting out first, each team will have a chance at the ball and it will be legend starting out first. Scott Stahl is at quarterback. They need a the football, legends. there we go. <laughs> and we got a football, as we said, uh, Terrence Williams and Nick Vandenbosch, the guys that got it together, they're football guys, and they're going, we're not going to end in a tie. So here comes Scott Stahl, rolling to his left under pressure. Guess who got him? Swallowed up. Doriot, Aaron Doriot. Doriot adds a sack to his stat line. He's already had an interception. This is his field. He Absolutely. owns his field. He says, this is my home field, and... Uh, I don't know what his last game was like when he played for the Minnesota Sailors, but it had to be something really good if he had topped his performance here tonight. And you can see the coach, he wants to win. He brought that uh, line, he brought the blitz, and making it happen. Two schools of thought, Floyd. You know, the team who starts on offense usually has a disadvantage because the team after them gets to see what they need in order to um, win the game. But if they could put some pressure on them by scoring a touchdown here, you know, it might get in the heads of the dynasty. So. Not a good start so far. Split way to the right is Danny Carter, and Thompson is on the coverage, and you got the fans who are really into this also complaining, saying, hey, a lot of contact. A, a lot of contact right there, Floyd. Again, you don't want it, you know the refs to decide it, but a lot of contact right there. It looked like Carter had him beat and uh, stall a nice ball, uh, but no call there by the ref. <laughs> so that brings up third and long as the ball is on the 23 yard line and there is no first down here so and it could be four down territory it obviously depends on uh, whether you're going to kick or not Matt Crow will be split to the left and Danny Cotter to the right looking and it's intercepted yeah, I don't know where he was looking there, Floyd. Linebackers just dropping right back in their zone. Stahl put it right on him. Devastating blow there for the Legends as the dynasty hold them to zero points. A field goal could win this thing now. That ball was intercepted. Is that Doriot that got that? I nope, wouldn't be surprised. Uh, yeah, I, would. I think it was Mike Vila. Whoever it was, you know, they say linebackers don't have the hands, but I'll tell you, <laughs> some of these guys are surprising me out here. Well, let's see what's going to happen now as we've had a battle all the way, and now it's the dynasty, and they're going to come right out for the kick. Interesting decision here. They must have a lot of confidence in their kicker here. Uh, Tyler Morin. He's already got one extra point today. And the Dynasty win. Yes. They will win on a field goal. I don't know, Floyd. From our angle, it looked close, but the ref calls it good. What a battle here today as the Dynasty come away victorious. They win on a 32-yard field goal by Tyler Morton of Ludington. And what a great game. game great game for everybody. Absolutely. As, uh, it is... Tyler Moore. That. that was a 17-yard field goal. Ice water in his veins, cashing the game-winning field goal in the first inaugural Muskegon All-Star Classic football game. 
Wow, All what right. a what a game we've had here, Floyd. <laughs> had a discussion, uh, several guys, on how far that was. I think it was, it was, we think it's about a 27-yard field goal. Bottom line is, well, they took it, it from the good. ten, the ten and, and uh, seven-yard uh, snap. Yes, and so it know. is the dynasty winning 17 to 14, and what an exciting time, Brad. I mean, we started out here. It was uh, beautiful, 95 degrees. That wasn't beautiful, the heat, but it looked like it was going to be a great day. And then the rain came, the lightning came, and all the other kind of things with the weather went away, and we end up with a great overtime for the first game victory. Absolutely. And the dynasty, you know, they come out proving themselves with that defensive touchdown. Um, and then, uh, obviously, the legends coming back and scoring on their own and then scoring again uh you know they missed that extra point but then they were able to convert the two-point conversion to take that 14 to 7 lead but the dynasty said it wasn't over yet as uh doriot was able to take the pass from cockerel all the way and uh how about a day for aaron doriot a sack yes. an interception a touchdown did he kick the extra point too? i think he uh <laughs> he was working the concession stand too when he was on the sideline I, I mean what a player great job as our staff here ghtv Corey Blackman on the audio, Alex Coleman, Nick Lard, Azando Pollard on the cameras, Chuck Coleman, uh, Case, uh, Kaylin Lenore, uh, Nathan Hicks, our director, Tanya Johnson, Dennis Redgill, our producer, Brian Willer, Technico, and also Lindsey Huddleston, the second, uh, Greg Shaler, this Floyd Font on behalf of Brad. Brzezinski, <laughs> and also, hey, congratulations, of course, to TJ, Terrence Williams, and Nick Vandenbosch on what a great game and a great success as the first Muskegon All-Star Classic is over as it is the Dynasty winning 17-14.